Hey, this is Tyler with TeachX Survival. I get a lot of questions about how to sharpen knives. One of the questions I get the most is how to sharpen a convex knife or a convex ground knife like a Bark River Bushcrafter. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that. Also, I'm going to show you how to sharpen a Scandinavian ground knife using this heli right here. Um, and the thing that we're going to use today is this strop or this leather strapped to a board from DLT Trading. All right, so stay tuned. Alright guys, so uh, about a month ago I think it was, I put out a video that showed you how to sharpen a Scandinavian ground knife. Um, for those of you that don't know what Scandinavian grind is, most of the time they're talking about a flat ground knife. A flat ground Scandinavian knife is basically a knife that has one angle from the place where it starts to cut all the way to the tip. They might have a micro bevel on it, which is a super small secondary angle right at the tip. This one, to the best of my knowledge, is a zero ground knife. However, whether it's a, a flat ground Scandinavian or a convex ground Scandinavian meaning, Scandinavian, meaning that there's a little bit of an arc to it, I like to add a micro bevel, just a very, very micro bevel to it using some sort of a leather strop. Okay? So there's that one that I showed you in the other video on Scandinavian or flat grinds, and then there's this guy right here. This is a convex ground knife so if you can see right there convex meaning that it has not got any solid angles wipe some of the dust off here so there's no solid angles on there it's constantly arcing from the place where it starts to remove the metal until the tip so this is a Scandinavian convex grind instead of a Scandinavian flat grind this specific knife is a Bark River CPM 3V Bushcrafter or ultralight bushcrafter that that's one of my favorite knives um, Before I forget this is the heli knife that I used with the uh, boss videos that we filmed with, with blade HQ This is I'm gonna slaughter the name, but it's the Temagami or whatever um, It was designed by Les Stroud Anyway great knife so that way you guys know which blades I'm using Okay so if you're going to be in the field and you're sharpening these knives, you don't, assuming that you haven't like chipped an edge or really busted this up, all you ever need to do is use a leather strop. Now, there's, usually when people think of a leather strop, they're thinking of the one that a, 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 a barber uses. The problem is the barber's blade is not a convex ground or a Scandinavian flat ground. So it's okay that that leather bends as they sharpen it. That's a problem with knives like this though. With knives like this, the only give that you want to exist is in the leather itself, okay? That's why this leather has been glued to the back of this board. Now, I have two different types of grit. This is basically the Bark River, this is the Bark River Black Magic is what they call it, but it's the more it's, it's the more coarse grit. Now when I say more coarse, it's the more coarse out of two very fine grits, all right? I can't remember if it's an 8,000 or a 6,000. I will figure that out and leave that in the comments. It's kind of irrelevant. All that you really need to know is the black stuff is more coarse and the black stuff will remove steel on a, micro, a minute level. The green stuff is less coarse and essentially it polishes steel. So it's basically just smoothing stuff out and realigning the carbides at the tip of the blade. Now with that, it's gonna cut smoother because it's polished, but it's also gonna go dull quicker. So all you need in the field, in my opinion, is the black stuff. However, it's nice to really clean the blade up and make it look beautiful, essentially, with the green stuff. So, what you'll do essentially, and this is a new bar. Um, I gave the other one away to my friend, Jake, that runs uh, Wild Jake Survival. Go check his channel out, by the way. I'll leave you a, a link for that. But what you do with the bar is I've got a green side and a black side. You can tell that I've used this before because that black in the green is steel that's been removed. And you can kind of tell where there's steel that's been removed here, too, in the black. So all I'm really going to do is just find a nice, solid surface. 
and fill in all of these blank spots where the loose um, can't think and work at the same time. I'm filling in the blank spots where the leather shows. All right, because all that we want is the the material to grab the metal as we sharpen. All right, so I basically scrubbed that up real good. This is just chunks of material, not actual chunks of leather. And then I'm gonna do the other side as well. So when I'm sharpening a convex ground knife, what convex mean again means again is that I have no straight angles. It constantly slopes. So I don't want to use a stone or something if I don't have to. The only reason I would use a stone is to remove large amounts of steel because I'm I really I mean I was cutting a rock or did something stupid and abused my knife. So if you treat this right, you should never have to use anything but this this guy right here to sharpen a convex knife. Now all you're really doing is I will lay it with my finger so that I know I have the correct angle and then I'm sliding it back. Let me start with the black. Okay, so I'll know I know I have the right angle and I'll start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay? You can see a little bit of fuzz flipping up on the back side. Right? And then I'm basically going to put my finger, finger there to get the other angle and do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five. Getting a little bump here. Smoothing it out. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now you can actually see metal starting to be pulled away right there. It's not super aggressive, but it is removing it. You can also see how it's starting to polish right along that blade edge as opposed to up here so that way you know that it's actually working now just like with my Scandinavian grind video I did 10 on one side 10 on the other and I'm going to continue to do 9 and I'm not pushing very hard at all 6, 7, 8, 9 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, Nine. Okay, what I'm essentially doing is pushing and removing burrs on this side and aligning them back up. Now I'll continue to do this on both sides until I get all the way down to one. Okay, so once I've done that, I'll be able to just do one on one side, one on the other, one on one side, one on the other. The reason why I'm going back and forth like that is I don't want to build any kind of burrs on one side. Um, if I do start to slope the carbides on one side, I need to scrape them off on the other. Okay, so once I've done that, and I've done this ten times or whatever, let me show you how polished that's starting to make the blade. It's hard to see, but it's really, really smoothening it up right there. And I've used the crap out of this knife. This is the first time I've actually sharpened it, but it being CPM3V steel, it hasn't really needed it. Um, I've made a lot of bow drills and buy your deadfalls and just cut all sorts of stuff, get a few fish with it. Um, it's holding up phenomenally. So once I feel like it's as sharp as it's going to get with that more coarse grit, I flip it over and I'm basically going to polish it up with this more fine grit. So I'm going to repeat the process 10, 10, 9, 9, 8, 8, 7, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay? 10 on one side, 10 on the other, 9 on one side, 9 on the other. And all that I'm doing there is so that I get equal polish and equal steel removal on both sides. And a little note on this, I'm not putting a lot of pressure. The reason being is I don't want to fold the leather down so that it's such a steep angle that it's scraping my blade, um, scraping the sharpness off. Okay, The angle is very important and you don't want to push too hard because if you push too hard, that leather will wrap around the blade and it will just clean your your sharpness off so it's very important not to push really hard just barely a little more pressure than the weight of the blade is all that I'll, I will add to this If, you, if you're trying to figure out where you need to hit more and less, as you look at this, there's a really polished center of the blade here. Not quite as polished right here and not quite as polished right here. 
So what I might do is another set of 10 just on this part of the blade and then just leave this one be. But it basically lets you know where you've hit and where you haven't hit. So you can see right here where I've hit it, right at the tip I, I haven't quite. All right, so I'm gonna finish that up. Okay, so this is sharp. I'm gonna also show you real quick how to do this to a flat ground Scandinavian knife right here. Okay, this is a, a flat ground, the other one's convex. It basically means this isn't a straight line, the other one had a little bit of an arc. So not major differences, but this is what we call a zero grind, so the angle just goes to a point and then stops as opposed to a micro bevel with a little, uh, little bevel at the tip. Um, with this, essentially what you'll do is you'll use a Japanese water stone like you did in the video, but you'll finish it off or touch it up with this type of device. Okay, So I'm going to do a touch up on this blade to clean it up just a little bit. And basically what will happen is as you cut, it kind of rolls the carbo carbides on a micro level to sides or it causes them to be misaligned or you can even get a burr on one side. And the act of, of uh, using the strop basically brings them all up into alignment like a super micro uh, like a micro serrated blade and that's essentially what you're looking at. You wouldn't be able to see this unless you look under a microscope but that's, a, that, that's really what we're doing. So just like I did with the convex one, I do the exact same thing with the Scandinavian grind. Only there's a little more hard of an angle because it's, it's one line as opposed to an arc. So let me start out here. Okay, I've basically sharpened that up. You can tell because of how clean and mirror that blade is now. Um, but now I'm going to polish it off and clean it all the way up with the polishing side or the green side. And I do that exactly the same way. All right, so you can see how mirror polished that guy is right there. You can almost see the camera's reflection in the blade on both sides, and it's much cleaner than it was. A little bit of scrape marks, but I'll be able to work those out with a little more time. Um, anyway, so that's all you really need to do. You treat your blade with respect, and you, you use it the way it was meant to be used, and uh, you'll be able to sharpen it constantly with one of these guys. So this, this you can find at uh, DLT Trading Post. I will put a link down in the comments section. It comes with the board and two straps of leather and both of these bricks of um, grit. It's like Jeweler's Rouge, but anyway, it's the green, black ma the green magic and the black magic. All right, so the last thing that we need to do is to test these guys out to show you how sharp they are now. The best okay, so basically I used both of those knives in some of my videos. The uh, Bark River one I used during the urban video that I filmed. I'm not sure if that's on my channel yet or if it'll be out before this video. Um, the heli knife I used filming with Blade HQ at the Boulder Outdoor Survival School. We made spoons and bow drills and hand drills and all sorts of stuff with that. So they were used pretty heavily. They weren't exactly dull, but they weren't really sharp. Anyway, so I have a rigid paper and a soft paper. Rigid paper is easier to cut. Um, soft paper is harder to cut. So I'm going to show you both with both blades. So here's the Bark River. Dinky little guy's cut there and I can turn it. Turn it however I want and it's going to cut it, right? So we've got little guys there, a couple more little curlies. The whole of this actually really rigid paper. You can see I can cut deep or I can cut really fine. Okay. And then uh, here's the heli. Now this one, it, it either cuts or it doesn't. There's just a fine line between it. It either cuts or it doesn't. That's just because of the Scandinavian flat grind. So with this flat grind, I'm almost ripping through this stuff. It can cut straight. I can turn it. Turn whatever angle I want. Another little curly. The, the best way to see is if it's sharp is if you can get these little bitty curls coming off. All right. Get some better curls here. I'm not doing a very good job. There's some little curls coming off of it. That's what you want to see with a knife that's super sharp. Okay, now to try with a, with a softer piece of paper. This is very thin compared to that other stuff. You should be able to just drive right through it, yep. A thinner curl here. 
hard to hold this up straight. There you go, hold that side. There we go, I can see those dinky little curls we're looking for. Get a good start point here. Kinda hard to do this while looking at the camera. There we go. Then and you can kind of you can kind of once it grabs you can kind of change your direction and whatever you want, right? So and then of course you always see the people slashing at it. That always cracks me up because it's so easy to cut when you slash. Like it's always it's always gonna cut when you slash at the little rips. Anyway, super sharp. Of course it always slashes if you go fast with it. Can't see them, but they're penetrating like that. So, all right, guys, that was a quick video on how to sharpen a convex knife and how to touch up a Scandinavian flat grind with the. DLT trading post. I'm gonna call this the wood strop. I don't remember the name of it, but essentially it's a strop glued to some wood. If this has been valuable to you, please hit the subscribe button, share with your friends, leave some comments. If you have any questions, put them down on the bottom and I will get to you. Uh, check out the comment sections for a link for all the stuff that I'm showing. And thank you for watching TJX Survival.